Hi everybody, I'm Kelvin Thompson, joined uh, by the effervescent, iridescent, uh, inimitable uh, Angela. Hi, I'm going to return all of those back to you. I think you're you're missing all those. Were we muted so, that entire time? That would be yeah. exciting, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we just solved. It was piece. awesome. And then that's how that was how that was how that and the feedback. That's really that's really very good. That's wonderful. So Take uh, seventeen. <laughs> that's right. So I'm Kelvin. I'm Angela. And uh, we're with you on OLC Live, the the penultimate interview segment of uh, OLC Live here at OLC Accelerate. There's uh, one more interview. John Stewart uh, will be up at the top of the hour, 12 p.m. Eastern time, with Maddie Shogren with an inside look slash interview slash amazingness of the escape room at the Technology Test Kitchen at OLC Accelerate. And then right at the end of that, John will do a quick, uh, quick wrap up. So this is a mini portion of uh, OLC Live. Uh, so, so we're here with uh, Angela doing a bit of a pivot, right? We're, we're kind of talking a little bit of OLC Live here and OLC Live at Innovate 2019, right? April 3rd through 5th in Denver. Denver. In the brand new Gaylord Rockies, Rockies. property. And my sister from another mister, Jessica Knopf, and I have been tapped to take the helm. Wasn't Jessica supposed to be here? She, is it, where is she? Is she hiding? I think she might be stuck in the escape room. Oh. It's quite possible she hasn't escaped. <laughs> or possibly she's on a leave it on a jet plane, don't know what she's going to be back again. No. Something, something like I that. I wanted to awesome. sing, but I'm not going to uh, do that to our audience this morning. Oh, I was oh. screaming all night last oh, night, nice. um, doing very important things, very and important uh, things. Uh, Splash Mountain oh, yeah. was one. Didn't yeah. work out. Um, How did it not work out? <laughs> so, fun fact, John Stewart's seven-year-old daughter and I are best friends, uh -huh. and we decided to ride Splash Mountain together, uh -huh. even though it was in the 40s last night. And um, uh, I'm beginning to see why it didn't work out. We, I had a sweater like this one on, and we ended up in the front row of the car. So, um, <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a lot of that. And then so. so this is this is not my usual uh, Janis Joplin rasp. This is uh, okay, this okay. is special from the, from the party. Yep. Yeah. No, but we're going to be in Denver um, for the the conference, and it's also like the opening of the Game of the Rockies. There hasn't really been a big thing there yet. So we're really excited about being in this space, but one of the things that we're trying to do is bring in our international audiences. Um, we have a lot of folks from around the globe that are involved in the OLC community, and um, we're going to try something new with having um, international folks tuning in at different hours of the day, some wee hours of the night. You're going to Rockies around the clock? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> Right? I'm not gonna That's going to be a thing. I'm you not, watch it. You watch it. That's I'm not going to give it to you. The audience might. Oh, oh, the crowd, the crowd around says no. The votes are in. Oh. American Idol, the polls are close. If I try to laugh at my own jokes, I don't know who will ever. <laughs> Kelvin laugh has not at won. My own jokes. But yeah, so that's kind of cool. So, the, so your vision is OLC Live, still be a thing. OLC Innovate. It's going to go global. We're going to go global. And it's going to go non-stop. Non-stop. So the idea is that... Why does 7-Eleven have locks on the doors? <laughs> For people like you that come in and want to share funds. That's right. Lock it! Lock it! <laughs> I know it says we're open 24 hours, but no, lock it! Not right now. Yeah. No, we, um, we're thinking about short lightning talks from people all around the globe that can't physically be in Denver. Mm -hmm. And then after that, a 10 to 15 minute short collaborative session where everybody will work together in the room. So we actually really need um, folks that are interested in being moderators. So it's not too early. To get involved. That's right. Well, we'll start up. Make a plug. How would somebody <laughs> Oh, I want to do that. How would, what would somebody do? So I'll meet everybody where they're at. So if you're a Twitter user, at Angela Gunder is a great way to find me. Um, if you go onto the OLC website and contact the fantastic folks that are in charge of the ops committees or your conference chairs, 
Harshaw Nelson and Ben Scragg. You can reach out to your program chairs, Kate Sanka and John Stewart. Um, you can find any of us on our Squad Goals Network website, which is an initiative that we started about personal learning network. So if you want to be a part of that network, you're in that network. You, your membership card is in the mail. Um, SquadGoalsNetwork.com. You can track us down. So any of those, that if you're all thinking, oh, there's something I might want to do, just Reach out to any of those people in any of those methods and say, I would like to be involved. In Tell me more about place. this international thing. Yep. Like literally, and that's, hashtag, all, that's all you have to do. Hashtag OLC international thing. Like that's what we're going to, maybe not. <laughs> I'm going to work on that. Rockies around the clock. <laughs> <laughs> nope, still not taking it. <laughs> still not picking up okay. what you're putting down. All right. You're not alone. <laughs> you're, not, you're not alone. I think that sounds really kind of interesting. So you think the entire run of the conference, you're going to start. Before the conference, or start uh, simultaneously with the conference. We're thinking about 24 hours, a little bit before the conference starts, and then into the conference. But what we're going to do is actually figure out what our audience um, would like to would like to have it be. We have some other folks that are involved in helping figure out the logistics and the planning of it right now, including Keegan Long Wheeler. As many shout outs as I can give to that man, I will. Um, he's my Sherpa in all things technical and innovative, um, and he already made a diagram. I literally was in the car on the way from Tucson to Phoenix, telling him my crazy idea, and as I was saying, it, yep, and he had a map out with time zones that he had printed out and was already drawing and saying, okay, if you want South America and Central America and North America, you can have this many people speaking in these, you know, this cradle of hours in the day. And those are the people that I want in my life that are going to immediately start drawing and diagramming. You can make some money this time of year because there's people who would pay for that algorithm to figure out how Santa makes it all the way around the, the globe in one, uh, one year. Keegan, if you're listening, Kelvin just gave you the key to success. That's right. And it's a cottage industry. We'll never talk to you again because you'll be super famous, but we, we wish you the best. That's right. That sounds really cool. It sounds like a Bit of a cast of thousands, though, right? I mean, you're gonna you, you can't get enough people involved in this to make that happen. You know, I am one of those folks that, and this goes. I'm Brazilian. This goes back to my Brazilian roots. And uh, people show up at your door. You figure out what resources you have, and you extend them and stretch them. There's actually a really famous Brazilian song. So the national dish of Brazil is this dish of black beans. Mm -hmm. And the words in the song say, "Put a little more water in the black beans because more people." Ah, uh, yeah, it. stretch it. So that's what I'm all about. Put a little more water, water in. Yep. Uh huh. I got you. That's so we're gonna. That's what we're gonna do in Denver. Only it might not be black beans. I'm trying to think about like what are the what are the foods that I should be quoting. Don't answer that. Do you know the you know the story uh, stone soup? Oh. Same principle. Why did I think of like Baba Yaga when you said that? I don't know. That let's let's, let's not let's that. not do that. that okay. Would be good. That's not good. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay. That's not that. But you know the whole idea of like uh, you know the story. I barely know the story. Wrong. You know the story that the whole idea of like, uh, oh, I'm gonna make stone soup for you, but boy, the stone soup, I'll make it. It's like this person's gonna, you know, treat everybody and uh, oh, stone soup. Okay, great. So I'm gonna make it for you. As people. Well, you know, boy, that's too bad. What? 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 Stone soup's really bad with potatoes. Really a lot bad with potatoes. I just don't have any potatoes. Oh, I, I've got some potatoes. Oh, would you mind? Oh yeah, great. And. Uh, Stir it some more, I think it's great. Oh. Oh, yeah. I got some carrots, and it keeps on going, keeps Everybody on going, keeps on going, keeps on going. All the guy really ever had was some water out of the river and some, some rocks, but you know, everybody else's contributions. So as, long as, as, long as, <laughs> as long as the rocks don't make it to the sea. That's right. That's like a lot of children's stories that we give our kids to teach them about sharing and community. They're just about con artists. That's so right. They're, they're reframed, which I am totally fine with. That's right. There's something about the wolf is up with rocks in the stomach or something. Oh, um, that's like the original, what was that, Goldilocks? Yeah, or maybe a Little Red Riding Hood or something. It's, it, they're dark, man. Those, those brothers grin. They're they pretty uh, grim. grim. That's right. Hence the name. At, and we're at the Magic Kingdom. No, no, well, no. Then, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I've got a colleague uh, who used to be at UCF, who's now at USF, the University of South Florida, Dr. Kevin Yee, who uh, makes a, uh, uh, a bit of a specialty connecting. He's, he's a big Disney file, mm -hmm. and uh, he's like a Germanic studies guy, and he, he loves talking about fairy tale connections. Uh, the two the Disney-fied uh, versions, and he loves all of that. Loves Disney stuff, but he's like, 
These two things are not they don't <laughs> the same thing. So my mom, Dr. Laura Franklin, she's a French professor, and I remember really early on she explained that to me and my sister, and Cinderella was the example that she gave. So it wasn't a glass slipper, it was an iron slipper. Ooh, and they can use they can use the word there, glass, mm. with there, iron. So we have a very lovely, uh, lovely tale based on poor translations. I love that. Which is kind of how I feel about I talk about translations all the time. Like, hey, we're gonna take a face-to-face -face class and translate it to the online. It's like, okay, we're gonna do a weak approximation as opposed to thinking about the unique affordances of online. All this is serendipity, right? My mom gave me that so long ago when I was a little kid. Yeah, I didn't even know. You know, uh, so I said, um, all art is recovery from the first line. So, <laughs> you know, what you make of it, right? You're just kind of, you're just kind of, oh, we're going to go with that. I like that one too. So they're, they're, I can't remember who that is. I used to know. I looked it up. I'm not going to come out tomorrow and back to that. So I was, I, I, have, I have a question for you. Uh oh, no, no. There's no <laughs> I don't have any answers. There's not a whole lot uh, left here. So, what you got? as somebody that's uh, going to be doing some old C Live shenanigans uh -huh. in April, uh -huh. what advice do you have for me after doing this for, for two terms? All art is recovery from the first <laughs> you just You just go with it. You know, like, okay, here we go. Oh, and we're live. We're just, we're just, we're just making. Stuff up, you know. It's a, you just gotta just make them ups. Yeah, you, just, you just you just go with it. You just roll with it. It's all good. It's like improv. It's like anything else. It's like stone soup. It's just I thought we we're doing this. We're doing this other thing instead. It's all it's, it's fine. It's it's you just gotta lean in. Okay. Embrace embrace the ambiguity. There we go. I just did a video in the escape room about. Um, you got out. <laughs> I got out. Indeed, I made it down here. Um, I, I had a sign that said, yeah, hashtag go forward. Mm -hmm. And going forward is all about embracing ambiguity. Yeah, because if you don't have that mindset when you walk in of like, hey, this might not work, and it needs to be, hey, this might not work, and in that's. That way, and it was going to do something. And that's okay. Yeah. That's totally okay. Or this might not work if I go it alone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a, good, a good reason to bring all of your folks in together and try to solve the problem together. Or this didn't work for me, I wonder if somebody else might have a piece that I'm missing. Yeah. You know, that being said, I mean, not to be uh, too structured about it, but John Stewart has been talking about this in, in general, and, and I think this is a good principle. Uh, even though we're going to go into a new iteration of OLC Live, uh, this will be the third iteration of some kind of OLC Live uh, at OLC Innovate 2019. So it's not too soon to begin thinking about, well, what does success look like? Now, you've got to be open to success looking like something else, right? Mm -hmm. But what what is success as we intend it look like? How will we know if we've arrived? What are the thresholds, right? And so knowing that going into it is not a bad thing. Uh, as we look at uh, sustainability and so forth, and are, are, is this working? How do yeah. we know it's working? Uh, and, then, and then the wider net of, well, what, what is outside of our boundary of success that we, that we can capture? So having some kind of metrics, some kind of, not to quantify everything, right, but just to, that can be qualitative as well. What does success look like? How will we know? So I'm good with thresholds. I'm not good with, um, you know, have we arrived? Because I think that... Well, journey versus destination. I, I get that. Yeah. Well, not only that, I think that it assumes that um, there is uh, completion and there sure. is perfection, and I think that both of them are false. No, I get that. But we do have these little, you know, milestones that we can set, and I think quite often, and I'm speaking for myself, I'm one of those those people that I'm thinking way, way, way down the line of like where I want to be, and I'm not always in that space of how am I moving the needle a little bit and then taking some time to both reflect on where I went and then celebrating that win. Yep. Especially the celebrating the win. I don't think that we that we do it enough. Oh, and Kathleen Ives yesterday there was a um, a great panel um, that was on the confidence crisis. It was about imposter syndrome. I heard, I heard that thing was rocking. I it was really so talk. much fun. Yeah. Uh, shout outs to uh, Tina, our fearless leader, who put the whole panel together and started it out by saying, hey, I didn't know any of these people before I called them and said, do you want to be on a panel together? That is what it's about. That's the dream. But Kathleen said, you have to celebrate the small wins. And she said, I celebrated walking into this room and not tripping when I walked into yeah, the room. I'm with her. And like, I want to be in that place where, yeah, where we all elevate each other and we celebrate each other. And we're like, you know what? Hey, 
I got through this interview with Calvin, and I didn't make a fool of myself. Or maybe I did make a fool of myself. Yeah, and... I wouldn't be worried about that, that, that <laughs> you being on that foot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all nothing good. more important than other ones. I'm not put on my right one and something backwards. And I, I get that. All I those good all words. This, all this about the same time at, uh, at our institution, occasionally tell folks, you know, I've been around this place a long time. I've learned that there's so much working against us. We should just pause and celebrate every little step forward. Yeah. 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 It's like, do we, do we got anything done at all? We got any, any more <laughs> momentum? Yay! Yay! That's right. Next. You know. So, yeah, I, I get that. So, milestones, fine. Uh, it's just it's good to be able to mark uh, progress and see a trajectory, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, otherwise, you're just kind of. Well, it, it's a great experience for those who participated and others who are going to be on the side saying, well, what have you done? We're back to storytelling again. Mm -hmm. That's all it's about. Isn't everything? <laughs> it certainly is with you, I know. I'm, 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 I'm a crafty story. yarn, but yeah, as much as we can close the loop with stories, um, the better. We're open. We're open to the loop. Oh. Um, so we might just kind of take just a quick second and say, hey, you folks who are joining us synchronously, uh, synchronously in the room, hello, lovely people, and uh, synchronously online, hello. People and just want to point out that you've got uh, that hand icon, kind of looks like this, a little grayer. Uh, if you want to say something, you want to ask a question, you want to make a comment, just click that thing, and and uh, the lovely and charming Chris will uh, put you on stage, and we'd love to hear from you. If you don't have that capability and you want to do a text chat thing, just hit the question mark icon. That'll work too. Uh, we've got Terry Green coming up. You're on. Oh. The connection is is a little bit a little bit hazy over there. Can you hear me? We can. I'm teasing you, Terry. You sound loud. Okay. Tell us who you are. Where you are. <laughs> okay, my name's Terry Green. I am a program manager with eCampus Ontario in Canada, um, and I'm in Peterborough, Ontario, north of north of Toronto, northeast. My question is, uh, what is this Squad Goals Network thing you mentioned earlier? Tell me more about uh, that. All right, I see your time is up. Oh, good. No <laughs> we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll talk about this one. Well, uh, Terry, your check is in the mail for mentioning Squad Goals Network. I totally appreciate it. Um, but it's a really, really awesome way for us to create some structure. Because what a lot of us felt was organically one of the best things that we did in terms of solidifying connections for our work. So uh, there are many of us that met at conferences like this. Um, I'll give you one um, story. I'll give you the true behind the scenes story. So OLC Innovate, it was the very first innovation lab. And Ben Scrag, Dave Goodrich, and I have worked with a ton, a ton of people to put it together. It was an exploratory installation on design thinking. And we were exhausted, but we hadn't actually done the, the lab yet. We were super excited about it. Um, we had had some beverages, and we decided to do some very strong coffee, and, uh, <laughs> as New Orleans is known to have. And we gathered in the space, and we started talking. And we started talking about how we use design thinking to put the space together. We talked about how we brought all of our challenges into the space so that we could have people solve them, and also talk about their um, their failures and their successes and um, then just turn on the mic and record it. And uh, what ended up happening from that recording is we started an entire podcast series. Uh, the Innovation Loudcast came from that. Um, we took a lot of cues from Kelvin and Podcast, um, who continues to rock um, so hard in that Rocky's space. Around a lot. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> no. it's a lot good. Oh my good <laughs> virtual audience, if you can see the groans on the faces that are in this room. But long story short, too late, uh, we ended up uh, trying to uh, give, again, give some process and structure to this idea of. You put things together at your home institutions for conferences, and you work together with people for an extended period of time. Um, and then you end up turning around and leaving. You go back to your home institutions, and there's this sort of dip. I think people are about to experience it. We're at Friday at the end of the conference, and folks are buoyed by all of the new people that they've met, all of the new ideas that they, that they have that they want to enact when they get home. 
and things are too complicated and you know, they have their, their challenges. So we created a framework um, that says, here's how you can set meaningful, measurable goals for yourself to actually keep those connections alive. Um, and um, we ended up building a website to share the stories about people who kept those connections alive. And it turned into this thing called the Squad Goals Network. Um, and once again, with storytelling, we form these communities. And um, I actually met you, Terry, through that community, um, through another mutual connection, John Stewart. And um, it just reminds me that we, we have to be intentional about forging connections and then keeping that fire alive um, so the community is there to do that. So if you're a Twitter user, we're hashtag Squad Goals Network. Um, Squad Goals Network. And you just like the plain old www. Um, we're www. Still, we www. Do do no. Three? Trip no. 3D? No. No. Trip no. We're starting it now. So uh, we're making it so. It's just Squad Goals Network. Um, can I have a, a short follow-up question? Yes. Uh, are the lanyards big enough there? Are your necks sore? They're not for all of my pin swag, and I actually gave away some pins in Disney swap fashion, but um, I gave away my most uh, coveted pin today to John Stewart's daughter. Um, oh. We have the networking lounge here, um, which was a space that Jess and I built for people to network, but it's networking for introverts. We call each other introvert octopus sisters, and uh, we like to hide within a rock as opposed to like flit around and be a social butterfly. Um, so we wanted to create a space where people could feel like they could be their truest animal selves, whatever that is, um, and be in a space and enjoy. So our avatar for that actually was a hummingbird, because a hummingbird can fly in, engage uh, quickly, and then fly mm -hmm. back out. I gave Evie my, it was my, it was a hummingbird pin. We passed them out to a bunch of people, so if they had hummingbird pins on, they could see that they were speed networkers too. Nice, cool. Other, other questions, comments, Terry, for you? Um, no, all my lanyard-based questions are complete, thank you. I want to give a shout out to Terry too because uh, one of the things about having a big group um, and Scruggles Network is a big group right now um, is that you have to have a shared uh, leadership model so that you don't get burnt out. And we said, you know what, we need um, a couple of people to maintain the social media. So um, Ryan Strait, who has been so instrumental in just rocking Scruggles Network and helping us to win an OLC Effective Practice Award for it. Um, just saying. Just saying. <laughs> um, we had this idea that we should take turns with through the social media. So I got to do the first month in September, and he did October. But Terry Green is doing November right now. So if you hit up, it's international. Yeah, <laughs> it only took three months for us to go global, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just posted today because um, it's halfway through for me who's next that's a good question should because we're recording should we put somebody on the spot to do it who would you nominate <laughs> i don't know but to think about what about that. uh john hasn't taken a turn yet has he you hear it you hear it, heard it now folks he's not, he's not the reason he's, not, he's definitely the doing it <laughs> It's like a, th a what a three person vote. I vote yes. Terry votes yes. Brian votes yes. Done. Oh, somebody, Jennifer, somebody Jennifer Rafferty John. votes yes. No, he, he can't undo it. Somebody, somebody That's a great hashtag. Somebody tell John. Somebody tell John. Somebody tell John. Thanks, everyone, Terry. Anybody else have comments, questions, thoughts, opinions? Uh, Innovative suggestions. Uh, we see there are folks do with even sending video. Uh, we'd love to have you originate some video, say some things, uh, ask questions about the Squad Goals Network, uh, strong coffee from New Orleans, innovation, uh, global connections, uh, storytelling, yeah. uh, the, uh, the value of ephemeral uh, network digital learning kind of connections. Uh, any of those things would be here very 
or games. Otherwise, we're going to keep on talking because we could front with Bill in hours and hours. Dare I say, we could Rockies around <laughs> the clock. I just love, I just love like seeing my soul just like. Just like the pieces that I have just shudder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when we did when we did a, a, a workshop to, to kick off this conference, we were talking about storytelling, we were talking about my favorite topics, mm -hmm. which you and I have talked about before yep. actually, yep. Uh, not only online. So this was the third iteration. And remind me when we talked last. Have we built the games yet around the topic of the hero's journey? Games? I don't think so. I do not believe so. So um, that was one of the one of the takeaways from this conference was that um, people like to play games in order to learn concepts. I know this is not a new one. We had or Jane, people like to play games. If, if they learn something, that's great. We had Jane McGonigal for our keynote. We had um, Jared Morgan from Proctor U admitted that he Really, really, really loves Tetris. Not not just dabbles in Tetris, nice. okay. but big love. Have you? What was the last time you played Tetris? A long time ago. Well, I put you on the spot. That was I the heard. first time I heard you. Long time ago. Like, when did I think <laughs> that was that was the question that got you? Was when? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. So we decided to build some games around this idea of Joseph Campbell's monomyth. So. Joseph Campbell says that all of the great stories that have been told really follow the same structure, so the react structure of a hero going on a journey and completing a challenge and then coming back to the ordinary world with all these gifts. So since I last saw you, since we last talkcasted. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's uh, podcast episode 37. So if you were to Google podcast episode 37, you would find this uh, Conversation uh, with Angela and Justin Lott and myself at almost accelerate 2017. Uh, excerpts from, from that. Uh, along with a lot of resources from Angela and others about storytelling and monuments and all kinds of stuff. But keep going. That was no, I'm, I'm just like in awe of, <laughs> of that memory. I'm sure I could probably call out a lot of different books that you interviewed and you'd be able to pull it out from the Rolodex. Maybe. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have noticed, so we have a lot of trackable bit of short links, and, and uh, I've noticed that episode 37 gets uh, repetitive hits. Other, other things do too, but I've noticed that uh, it seems to spike up a little bit. But I think I just love hearing the conversation oh. that you just had. So. Well, we had a good time. <laughs> so we, um, we decided to uh, build on the conversation that we talked to you about yeah. uh, in that episode, and we've broken down the model map. Uh, using it in online course design into three components. So people think about the people that are in online courses, the paths that people take through online courses, and the methods that folks employ um, for the efficacy of those online courses. Mm -hmm. How does that fit in with the model map? So people, paths, methods. People, paths, methods. Come up with another key. We, I, and you know, it breaks my heart because I'm so OCD. So <laughs> somebody practice practices. Oh my god. <laughs> And you, and you get a car, and you get a car. And the model has changed. We just, now we're just it's, over it's this. People and paths and practices. Mm. Audience, how do you feel? Thumbs up. Yeah. Rockies around the clock. So, so we're not gonna we're not gonna translate. That was a warm crowd there for a second. No, not warmed up, not down with it. So people has now practices be turned into so for people a game based on Dungeons and Dragons uh -huh. for your mapping student personas. Okay. Paths, we have a game built on Oregon Trail, an mm -hmm. old computer game. Dysentery. A lot of dysentery, a lot of cholera. <laughs> we said, you know, no. in, the, in the online classroom, we really don't want that. So mm -hmm. what we're challenging is the LMS going down and the learning content is accessible and um, there it isn't quite have the visceral reaction. <laughs> well it's interesting because when people play the game and of course it's my game that the one that I built I just built the game about uh Pusona, the Dungeons and Dragons game. But my game is a co-op game and you get resources that you have to play based on course conundrums. 
And I tell you, at the end of that game, the scarcity of resources and supplies is so dire. And I am shocked that I, the perennial cheerleader and, and positive supporter of all things, built a game that is so depressing when wow. you play it. <laughs> because all, every time something bad happens, a student gets dropped from the class or they're administratively withdrawn. And then occasionally there are some cards that are played that if you don't have a support, everybody gets dropped from the class all at once. If you successfully channel the spirit of Morgan Trail, I <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> in that game. I, I got it. I got it a little too There's got to be a way to, uh, <laughs> to go uh, get out of the scarcity mindset and get into an abundance mindset somehow. <laughs> Maybe people can invent their own cards. And, you know, I, I don't know. There's got to be a way to come up with so the practices game, I think that that's sort of like the recovery oh, mode right. from <laughs> after your depression. Let's see when, when you need your your Zoloft. Uh, that's the that's the practices game, and that's based on where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Oh, Although it, it's now it now has a new mode um, that we play. That's more like the game Apples to Apples. I don't know if you played that card uh, card game. But oh, basically, a uh, person picks a card that uh, has a use case on it. And then everybody else has different practices that you can employ, effective practices within the classroom, and they have to answer that particular use case. So maybe they want to create a class that is project-based learning, that would be the use case. And then all of us around there would have different cards that would um, that we have to make a pitch for how we could maybe put one or two or three effective practices together in order to best meet that use case. And then the person that pulls the use case card has to decide which one they Gotcha. Now, since you've made a pitch, speaking of pitches, so if if that sounds like, huh, I could see myself wanting to play that game or those games and do something with that, now, how would I go about doing that? We have a website, it's monomythonline.com, and on that site we have all sorts of information about the monomyth and how we translate it to the online course design process. But most importantly, if you go to the resources tab, there's a button that says game. And all of them went there. Um, and I started as a graphic designer before I was an instruction designer, and I was a web developer. And um, I love to give source files to folks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all about everything open. Um, so, so they're not each 999? Nope, not for sale, they're for you. Um, ah, if you want sale, the game, you. you have the game. Um, but I had a lot of people ask me, uh, including Jennifer Rafferty, she said, hey, um, we're um, working on some different workshops for the OLC Institute. I just wanted to see what the game files look like and get them to our instructional designers. And um, I put the Illustrator files up on the web. Wow. So if you actually want to change the use cases within the um, the online learning trail game, the Oregon Trail based game, um, all of the icons came from uh, flaticon.com. I hope I'm not hope I'm not quoting that wrong. And then freepick.com mm -hmm. with a K. Um, both great places. So all of that art was Creative Commons licensed, yeah. um, but you can do the same. You could change your use cases. And the the, the game that I built is based on student interactions. But what I think would be fun is for somebody to remix it and maybe do it based on what the instructional designers yeah. see in their work sure. um, and how they would sort of mitigate okay. these issues and how faculty have to sort of struggle within these um, situations or maybe the best laid plans. Um, completely fell apart at the facilitation stage. So there's room for people to to make games of their own, yeah. or even administrators. I mean, how do you how do you give all the resources that you need to a team, knowing that you have a certain amount of work that has to happen? Um, there's a lot of moving pieces with that. Yeah. So anything to open up that dialogue. Yeah. Exactly, play the games we talk. Yeah. And uh, I've heard some really interesting reflections on that. So speaking of stories and reflections, so. In your own immediate context, where you're there physically and you've got here's the games, and you know what's happening there, except for the website. Uh, do you have any stories that you collected about what folks have done with these games that you have now distributed via web? Yeah, so with the games, it's been still pretty early and it's been anecdotal, but what we did was right before this conference, we opened up a space on the website for people to share their use cases. So we've started to contribute. But also, I think what's really important to note is that um, all of this is built on a framework that we created. You're hearing a theme here. Anytime I, I feel like something's working, I'm like, framework, process, framework, process. Um, because I want to make sure that people have some sort of structure to continue effective practices. 
person. Um, and the majority of us that are working on this project are primarily instructional designers in some capacity. So we thought about it in terms of a course map. And the structure is all built up such that people can think about who are the different people within their class. And if you were to say, okay, my students are heroes, what about all of the other roles that exist within the monument? Because um, Joseph Campbell wrote about nine different archetypes within the monument. I told you, I think, when we last talked about this, I've been pondering, you know, maybe the next class I teach, hmm, Tom as trickster, Tom as evil wizard. <laughs> the trickster is kind of an interesting character because um, the trickster is not always uh, holding all the bad cards. Right, that's right. They've really got some good cards. Bring it to fun, you know, bring it yeah. joy. That's right. So in the, the Rockies around the block. It's still, it's still a trick. It's not a treat. <laughs> so one of not the. Not all bad. You just said that. Not all. Not all. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> been recorded. Um, one of the folks in the pre con workshop, he actually was building a class on reading mythology. And this will be the, the second shout out to the octopus, but he thought about the shapeshifter character as the octopus. And I thought that, that was pretty clever because um, octopodes are uh, classically octopodes. octopodes. Do you want a little, you want a little sure. side item? I'll take it. So the word octopus is a Greek derivation, not Latin. So you can't put a Latin suffix on a Greek word. So it's not octopi, ah. it's octopode. Or octopuses, which is not as charming as octopodes. So. Octopodes has a, has a nice little tone to it. It does. So that's, or you can just stay in the singular. This octopus. And that octopus. And that other octopus. And two of them. Oh, no. <laughs> the two of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're, our our um our, our time is dwindling low, and uh, I haven't seen anybody else uh, shout out. But hey, if you have something you want to say or ask or comment on, and you want to do that uh, in text, you can click the little uh, question mark icon, or you can put that little hand that's more greater than mine, uh, and you can you can get in here before the the sounds of time. I dwindle out of the holiday times. Uh, we've got about five minutes uh, left. Otherwise, as you can tell, we will fill up all the time. Thank you. <laughs> Screen was frozen for a second. I don't know what was, uh, that was wait time. I keep I keep going with that, Chris. No way. I like wait that. Time everybody, everybody sees it from there. Octopodes. Octopodes. I'm going to use that. I think I'm, I think I'm going to uh, You know, my kid was uh, younger. We watched, uh, what was it, it uh, Aqualax or whatever, like a preacher report, preacher report, preacher report. It's a, it's a, it's a general thing. It's a, I thought you were talking about Finding Dory and what is, what is his name? Hank, name? Hank the Octopus. Uh, I think that, that sounds like right. Well, he was a he was a shapeshifter yeah, the for sure. Yeah, the story was like yep. The story, yeah. And I just read a book by Simon Montgomery, The Soul of an Octopus. And the talks. Soul. What is it with you and watch this octopus? <laughs> I got it. Um, so we know that they're invertebrates. We know that they're on the side of the animal kingdom that should not have um, a, a very detailed neurological system. They do not have brains as we know them. And yet, and yet they're out there. Octopodes, yeah, octopodes. problem solvers, yeah. creative, social in very specific ways. Like I want to talk to these folks, but not these folks. Yeah. Um, they uh, change color and texture through the chromatic cords. And really when they look at the DNA of an octopus, they don't really know how it ended up on that line. So yeah, Ryan is pointing to the sky. So there's a lot of folks that think, you know, alien drop, which I think about those Muppets. What were they? Like the guys that like meet me, you know? Like, I feel like this is all, yeah, like that, that's the origin of the octopus. Yeah. But it was an interesting book because it talks a lot about how um, we make these assumptions and we don't actually have all of the science and data yet. What's that called? The Soul of an Octopus soul. by Cy Montgomery. Cy Montgomery. I see, I don't go read stuff. I don't, I, don't, I don't really read that much. I read Hashtag it. read stuff. Yep. Yeah. You know, and somebody tells you, 
Somebody, Somebody tell John, John we're gonna make that one. We're gonna make that one hit. Hockey's <laughs> around the clock. No, nothing's gonna happen with that. Callers, if you're listening, please still donate, even though <laughs> our telethon is in its eleventh hour. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> please ignore what he's saying. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, we decided that we're gonna sign up for a for AM slot. Just because I could then say Rockies are about the clock. Do you know what? Nobody I, would, would, nobody would, I will <laughs> happily give you that slide. Oh, is that right? And Keegan Longwheeler right now is figuring out what time zone you'll be uh, in. Uh, so on a diagram. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, it might be Australia. I don't know. Good day. <laughs> I said, Rockies are around the clock. I was like, oh, no, sure. that's not good. <laughs> that's weird. They got weird. We don't know what's wrong with them. Say octopus. Octopus. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to give one more shout out, one more opportunity. Uh, Who's the champion? You want to have uh, something to say, you have a question, you got a comment, whatever, that's totally fine. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to make some plugs while you're thinking about whether you want to say anything or not. Sooner or later, possibly more later than sooner, uh, all of the segments from OLC Live here at OLC Summer 2018 are going to make it to the OLC Live archive. And you can find the archive by going to uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot slash O-L-C live archive. It really is that simple. Lowercase, no spaces, bit.ly slash O-L-C live archive. All the stuff that was on YouTube live, all the stuff that was in Shindig, our partners in Shindig, we appreciate them. The lovely and charming uh, Chris from Shindig, you're keeping everything up, so we appreciate that. Uh, all of that's going to be in the archive right now. The YouTube live stuff is there. Shindig stuff will get there soon. But hey, maybe you didn't get the whole program, even though they're even fast forward. You can hear what I sound like when I go, maybe, I don't know. Not that much. I recommend it. Than how it is uh, <laughs> now. Uh, but you can also go to the back catalog of OLC Live Sessions of 2018 to innovate. There's a lot of that. Uh, so check that out. And uh, don't forget also, at 12 o'clock Eastern Time today, John's going wild. He's going to go into the technology test kitchen escape room. And then we'll stick around right at the end. We'll do the um, uh, the wrap up. But I think Chris tells us we've got a comment or two. Uh, it, those last moment callers, last minute, you know, twenty thousand dollars they want to donate. <laughs> awesome. Surprise! It's me. <laughs> I'm allowed. Hi. Um, sorry I'm late to this. I came from another meeting. I can't do my band voice because I lost my, my voice of shouting with uh, my new best friend, Katie Stewart. Oh. Was that was terrible. <laughs> it's real bad. Oh, I would like to know what the highlight of Accelerate has been for both of you. I have not been there in person, but I've been enjoying f hashtag FOMO Fest. So um, I love that you mentioned uh, hashtag FOMO Fest. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been on the road for the past month. So I went to um, Online Learning 2018 in Toronto, where I got to connect with Terry. I'll be in virtually when I connect there. And then I went, uh, <laughs> I went to WCT after that um, and uh, it was with all sorts of fabulous people. And then I got to go to Educause after that. You really have been everywhere. I really have been everywhere. been everywhere. And then I had a break, and then now I'm here. And at each stop, I had you know different folks that I adore and I love to interact with. And I would say to them, hey, am I going to see you at the next stop on the train? And they were like, no, and I'm so bummed that I can't be at that one. Mm -hmm. And that was a conference. So we started this thing, um, FOMO Fest, hashtag FOMO Fest, and for those of you that don't have a FOMO stands for it, you're missing out. And the idea was just that we would tweet with that hashtag all throughout the conference. So for all of us that can't go, and I've been this person quite often where I see the Twitter feed for a conference I'm not at, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm missing everything. All of the cool people are there, and they're doing all the best things. So um, we just wanted to say, hey, we want to open this up. You're not excluded because you're not physically here. Um, and we want to make sure that we're sharing our individual takes on what we're getting from the conference. So one of my highlights was the fact that FOMO Fest, we started it formally at Educause two weeks ago. And um, I was so busy at this conference, running around doing all sorts of 
all these beautiful things that um, I adore, including the Women in Digital Le um, Learning Leadership Luncheon. We had a panel about um, folks' journeys into leadership that um, Jessica Knott and I organized, and um, Liz Chiboki and Mary Nemec were on the panel with me. Patsy Moskal moderated it, and Devin Cancel and Kim went off. And it took everything in me not to ugly cry through the entire thing. <laughs> the comments and the spirit and the energy, and the energy was non-gender binary. We had everybody in the room all advocating for um, equity and access in our field. Um, that was that was incredible. Um, but I got to relive it through FOMO Fest because I couldn't actually tweet during the thing. And even for me at the conference, I got to experience everybody else's So that was that was a serious hard hand for that. It's great. Love it. I think we have maybe one more comment, Chris. Is that it? Okay, good. So Kate, you got more? If you, if you can wrap this up. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the overtime. Sure. This is it. This is the right here. Hot dog. That's also a different Hot dog. Speaking of how how is Mickey Mouse? Well, <laughs> I was on a visit. Story there, so. Went on a visit yesterday, but I couldn't top my visit uh, with Mickey from last year. So we just saw right. him on the parade. We had an up close and personal Wait. Mickey experience. Wait. I saw Santa. I saw Olaf. Ooh. And I saw there was a Moana meet and greet, but I didn't get in there. Alana's well, hard to, to track down. Yeah. She's quite popular. It was a good she night. So. Good. I did promise, again, my new best friend, Evie Stewart, uh, I promised her polar bears. They did not come out in the beginning, but before we left the park, right around midnight, the polar bears were out. So I feel like it was a full success, and they were in on what was Perfect. Polar bears got polar bears. Perfect. Believe it or not, folks, I think that might just be the final word on OLP. <laughs> yes. Yes. We're in something like overtime. So, we came in with and we're back from OLP Live at the So, uh, we'll just say we'll be we'll be right back uh, at twelve o'clock uh, here with John Stewart, and we'll be right back shortly after that uh, with OLC Innovate twenty nineteen. Woo woo! Copying around my clock. You know what? I'm gonna love it. it. <laughs> I'm not proud. <laughs> And uh, that's it for us. Uh, over to you, John, in uh, 12 o'clock.